It's Mitch McConnell time. All right? We got to talk about motherfucker Mitch. It took me a while to notice this, notice this parallel, but I just realized that Mitch McConnell is exactly the same in nature and appearance, appearance as Darth Sidious from Star Wars. When you consider how Sheev Palpatine, who simply was a senator from Naboo, utilized corruption, political espionage. And then they have this and this. Mitch Sidious, I'm afraid the Supreme Court will be quite conservative when your friends arrive. True! True! Turtle cuck bitch. It's true. We got to dunk on a turtle though. It's time to make some turtle soup. Because as it turns out, his approach to governance is actually incredibly similar to that of Sidious. It's time. Yeah, we're going to have a shell of a time. Let me just show you something. I'm going to give you a little bit of a quote. Okay. You ready for a quote from Mitch McConnell? I'm going to read you a quote from Mitch McConnell. Okay. Listen closely, everyone. When asked about the Green New Deal and Medicare for All, Mitch McConnell said that as long as he was the, still the Senate Majority Leader after the 2020 elections, which he is, except for the runoffs, so he might not be, here's his quote. None of those things are going to pass the Senate. They won't even be voted on. So think of me as the Grim Reaper. That is a quote from Mitch McConnell, a direct quote of Mitch McConnell. None of those things are going to pass the Senate. They won't even be voted on. So think of me as the Grim Reaper. Mitch McConnell is not a believer in democracy. Mitch McConnell will not even let popular ideas be voted on. His control over the Senate is so iron, is so disgustingly inhumane that he will not even allow popular policies to be voted on. Mitch McConnell thinks he knows better for you and by knows better that you should be pushed into a meat grinder in order to self-enrich himself and his allies. He doesn't believe you're smart enough to know what you need. He doesn't believe Americans deserve anything. And he's continued to do that because as it turns out, it is now completely on Mitch McConnell that you do not have a $2,000 stimulus. How many of you right now would benefit from a $2,000 stimulus? Like would, would have your lives materially improved immediately? I would. I'm literally, a, I'm a streamer and I barely make an, I'd like have only just because of Christmas, started making my portion of rent in money off of my stream. So the 2000 would be very helpful. Damn, I benefit to $100. Yeah, damn, looks like just about fucking everybody. There's very few people in the world who couldn't use $2,000 in the middle of a pandemic that's destroyed the economy. Yeah, I mean, that is true, Devious Chilster. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, Devious Chilster says, he literally said that there is no fast, easy way to pass the bill through the Senate. And I just die inside because literally the only reason that's true is because he's not dead yet. Damn, that's true. The only rich person in chat? You might not be the only one. Your family become even richer? Well, I mean, that's fine. Use it well, I guess. Bob Coomer, good luck. We all, you know, if you're, if you're born rich, if your family happens to be rich, use it well. Use it well. Be a class trader. Don't make the world worse for yourself. No one, no one who is next in seniority after Mitch is as bad as Mitch. I'm sorry. Mitch McConnell is a evil genius. Sorry, but it's true. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's a little strange about that, Danny Fallon. Well, we don't agree with political violence on this stream. As we know, no political violence. We don't support that at all. Yeah, totally. We don't, we don't, we never will. Yeah, this is where we discuss politics. If you want to talk about political violence, you can talk about it elsewhere. But we can't talk about it or don't want to on this stream. Okay? That's all. It is very hard. Here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. 
uh, about Mitch McConnell. You should know about Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has been in power since... Uh, sorry, let me just double check real quick. Let me just make sure I get my dates right. Let's take a look here. Um, <clears throat> let me just... I want to make sure we got this correct. Uh, oh, right. Since 1984, Mitch McConnell has been contro in control of one of the Senate seats in Kentucky. Since 1984. Holy shit. And this guy has been sitting there wielding power quietly quietly mind you m quietly ruining your life yeah longer than a lot of us have been alive he's been in power and he's been using that to make it impossible for any um basically he's been devoting his life to uh needs to oh, hey. eat and pay rent thank you very much names Thank you so much. I do need to do both of those things, Roaming Gnome, and that helps me. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's been around for a long time, and he's been pushing very, very hard to the right for a very long time. He's a horrible person. I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, I mean, fuck, we could talk about this. Like, I mean, his judicial nominees are just terrible. Jeff Sessions, holy shit, he fought against Sotomayor. Um, he fucking fought against... Um, Kagan, he fought, he fought for, uh, well, let's see here. When Scalia died, it was McConnell who came up with the idea to delay, um, and, and refuse Merrick Garland the seat. McConnell has fucked you and everyone you know for quite some time. Oh yeah, we can talk about that too. I think I saved that just so we could take a look, you know, just a little bit about the, the state of of Mitch McConnell. We've looked at this. This is Mitch McConnell, by the way. These are photos from about a month and a half ago of Mitch McConnell. You seen these? Dude's not doing so great. He's basically rotting from the inside out. Mitch the Lich. Yeah, it's really fucked. This was from like a month and a half ago or something. He's really old. Mitch McConnell is... Uh, let me get his actual age. Mitch McConnell is currently... Where's his age? Where's his fucking age? Oh my god. All you can see is his fucking shit here. He was born in 1942. Yeah, he's like a boomer, I think. Yeah. Also, Mitch McConnell was responsible for Citizens United. Did you know that? Mitch McConnell was massively responsible for Citizens United, the law that makes it possible for money to basically buy anything in politics. This guy has ruined politics in America. And politics in America was not in a very good state to begin with. But Mitch McConnell, Mitch motherfucking McConnell, this turtle-ass motherfucker right here, when you think of evil in America, I want you to remember this man's face and this man's name. All of his associates are the people who are largely responsible for the suffering that you have experienced in your life. Whether it's from the uh, the disasters of your, of your generation not being um, taken care of because the government is hampered completely. Whether it's your packages getting fucked up because he helped gut the United States Postal Service, whether it's you can't get health care, that's probably because of Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has fought tooth and nail against even small reforms to Obamacare. Mitch McConnell has helped ensure that the Supreme Court will be conservative until most of us are fucking way old. Mitch McConnell is so bad for this country, it is hard to even explain it. And never forget this lesson, that a boring, turtle-ass motherfucker like Mitch McConnell can ruin the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans. And, if we want to expand it to the world, let's remember that Mitch McConnell was one of the biggest supporters of the Iraq War, of the following troop surges, Mitch McConnell is a warmongering monster. So even if he looks like a boring turtle, never forget 
this guy and the way that he operates. And watch out for people like Mitch in the future because sometimes it is the boring monster bureaucrats who get away with ensuring that poor Americans keep dying. And guess what? Mitch McConnell is aware of that. Mitch McConnell knows that uh, $2,000 would save lives right now. That there are people who, if they had gotten a Christmas $2,000 check, would have been able to pay their rent. And now they can't. There are people who would have been able to pay for hospital service. There are people who would have been able to pay for baby food. And he knows this. And he doesn't care. And in fact, you want to know how much he doesn't care? I want to show you what he actually did. So let's talk about it. $2,000 stimulus checks likely doomed after McConnell refuses to separate them from unrelated Trump demands. Now remember, right now, the House, most of the Senate, and even the White House agree on $2,000 checks. But guess what? Mitch McConnell doesn't want them. And you want to know how he did it? He poison-pilled it. Wikipedia says he's only worth $22.5 million. Uh, listen, when you're Mitch McConnell, his money isn't, isn't the important part. Mitch McConnell has political power that can get him anything. Anything. He wants anything. He's already a millionaire, but this guy has, will like, the power that he's able to wield in Washington can get him anything he wants. He doesn't need money. He doesn't need cash. He has it. He has $2.5 in wealth. Mind you, wealth is no debts. That's what he's worth above and beyond any debts he has. Who knows what his holdings are, but he has all kinds of other things. Like, yeah, international trade regulations. Who knows how much money he has hidden on offshore accounts? That's just what we know about. Efforts to boost the direct payments in the year-end coronavirus relief bill to $2,000 appeared all but doomed on Wednesday as Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he would not separate the plan from President Donald Trump's unrelated demands on technology and election policy. The Senate is not going to split apart the three issues that President Trump linked together just because Democrats are afraid to address two of them. This is what we call a poison pill. Are you familiar with the term poison pill? A poison pill is when you put something into a legislative bill that makes it impossible to pass. So, for example, let's say there was a... Let's say there was a disaster in an area that was predominantly full of marginalized people and you're a Republican Senate majority leader and you don't want to give those marginalized people money, but it looks like everybody else does. Well, what you could do using your power is you could say, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll give them money. However, we're going to add another law that is in this bill that says, all marginalized people in area affected by um, disaster get $2,000 and also all children in this town will be conscripted into the U.S. military. And then everyone sees the bill and goes, we can't vote on that. That's a poison pill. When you put something so absurd into a bill that no one can vote on it because... You would have to accept something ridiculous. That's what a poison pill is. A poison pill is a tactic. It is a political tactic that that where you can try and jockey whose fault it is by you putting in an extreme demand. So see what Mitch McConnell is trying to do right now is he's trying to make it seem like the Democrats won't accept his generous offer. But do you know what he wants to be passed? Do you know what the poison pill is in this case? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the poison pill. Let's go down here just a tiny bit. Um, this is just talking about what's happened. And where do we have it here? Let's see. I want to find the thing that he added to it. Why, why do we even allow bills to be Frankenstein together? Well, okay, there's a couple of reasons for that. It's very complicated. Um, oh, they don't even talk about it here until much later. Oh, they don't even talk about it barely here. The, the demand that he wants, by the way, 
um, the demand that he wants, just so you know, the poison pill that he wants in there is a repeal of Section 230. Section 230 is a law you've probably heard um, referred to quite a bit. It is a uh, U.S. code um, law that is, I'm trying to find where what it's a part of, like where it originally came in. 47 U.S. Code Section 230, Protection for Private Blocking and Screening of Offensive Material. 230 is a rule that makes a categorization for social media companies functionally. There are two categorizations of people that can put out media into the public. There are private corporations that are publishers, and there are private corporations that are platforms. And there's a difference here. So, for example, a publisher would be um, something like the New York Times. A publisher, oh, hey, well, very happy to have you, Eamon. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to being an imp once you hit the subscribe and, and bell. Much love. A publisher is like a newspaper. A publisher says... We are this newspaper. Our editorial team investigates these claims. We sign off on these and we publish these out to the public, right? So a publisher would be like a science journal or a newspaper or, you know, me. Maybe. You could say maybe I'm a type of publisher because I put out my own videos and I'm therefore responsible for the things that I say and the things that I allowed to be done on my channel. Now, a platform is not that. A platform is like YouTube. So YouTube doesn't or does very, very little curation of what's on their platform. They might have algorithms that help you find things that you might like, but they don't really endorse anything. They're not involved. YouTube is not personally involved in the creation of most of the content that's on their site. Now, they do act as a publisher when they do YouTube originals, but that's about it. Uh, that's fine, Eamon. I don't think you... I don't know that that's true. I don't know that that's true. Maybe you are a tanky, but we don't just... Here, we don't just think that every person, like, who's mildly authoritarian is a tanky, necessarily. Anyway. Um, let's continue. Let's not get distracted. So, here's 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 the... Just so you know what I'm looking at. This is the this is the text. It's very boring. This is the text of the... Of Section 230, Okay. So, this is really boring to talk about, but it's important to understand. So, a publisher is like YouTube or Twitter. They have, people can sign up, anybody in the world um, can sign up and make an account. And as long as you don't violate a certain set of rules, you're allowed to put stuff on that platform. And that platform is protected. It, as long as they make a good faith effort to get illegal stuff off of their platform. So like, for example, 4chan is able to exist because 4chan is a platform and they don't actually personally overlook every single thing that goes on their site. They let basically anybody come in and um, and post what they want. And if it's, obviously, um, if it's obviously illegal, they'll get rid of it. But other than that, 4chan can't be sued because some asshole went onto 4chan and said something stupid, right? However, you can sue the the New York Times if they report a story that's false and their editorial team signed off on it and they published it under their name. So that's the difference between a publisher like the New York Times and a platform like YouTube. So the poison pill would be to repeal Section 230. The repeal of Section 230 would mean that Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, 4chan, Reddit, any social media, Facebook, anyone that you can imagine would immediately become considered legally a publisher, which means anything that's posted on those sites is treated as the word of Twitter. Now, I don't stand for big corporations ever. 
However, I think you can realize how this would immediately destroy everything that we know about the internet, right? Can you imagine if you had, or actually here's another example, Discord. If, uh, if Discord would be considered a publisher, any bad thing said on any Discord in the world would be the personal responsibility of the corporation named Discord. Can you imagine how ridiculous that would be? It wouldn't function. That would be like the equivalent of saying that anything bad that happens in an apartment building is the responsibility of the owner of that building. Actually, that wouldn't even be as bad. It's so out of control. Like, we can admit, like, lo landlords are, are terrible and we want to abolish landlords. But imagine if a landlord could be taken to court because two people had a fist fight in one of the apartments and they, and it happened in the apartment. And you went to court and sued the landlord. We don't like landlords, but we can acknowledge that would ruin a lot, that would bust everything. Likewise, the repeal of Section 230 would destroy the internet as we know it. It would immediately uh, completely destroy Twitter, Google, YouTube, Twitch, all of them. And that's why nobody will ever vote on it. It's ridiculous. It's actually outrageous. And you might have thought it was kind of funny for me to point to, like, say that a poison pill is like writing into a law that all children have to be, um, you know, press ganged into the fucking military. But that's basically what this is. This is an ask that is so ridiculous that no one in their right mind would ever vote on it. No one. Nobody. Except for somebody who really just wants to see the world burn. And that's not going to happen. So what Mitch McConnell has done, very boringly and very sneakily, is put a poison pill in between all of America and their relief checks. That's what Mitch McConnell has done. So you're not going to get money unless something really surprising happens because Mitch McConnell put a poison pill in the bill knowing that nobody would vote on it. No one in their right mind. He wouldn't vote on it. You think that Mitch McConnell would destroy one of America's biggest industries? Are you kidding me? Social media is one of America's most rich and profitable things. It would just, it would destroy, it would damage our economy even further, especially in the middle of a pandemic. No. No, that's ridiculous. Not even Republicans would vote for that. The only people who would vote for that is QAnon Trump cultists who don't realize that even Trump doesn't want that. And Trump is just making a stink because he's too stupid to get it. Mitch is certainly the, mo I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's too many. Merrick DeVille says, hey, Merrick. Sex workers have actually already had already seen the effects of Section 230 being repealed. Yes, uh, there have been uh, protections removed for sex workers online that doesn't have to do with Section 230 exactly, but it does have to do with a similar issue. It's basically making porn companies solely responsible for anything posted anywhere on their site as if they were a publisher. And that has already happened to some degree within the porn industry really disgusting and I, I appreciate you bringing that up Merrick DeVille because I, I do think that's important um sorry I keep saying your whole name that's kind of silly um it was a direct amendment to section 230 through FOSTA SESTA oh I didn't even know that okay that's really good to know hey oh yeah I gotta give you your fancy name let me give you your fancy name Merrick real quick give me one second I'm just gonna give you your fancy fancy name yay you've returned with junk food that's awesome Yay, Merrick, you got to get a fancy name. Here you go. There we go. Bam. Fancy name. Fancy name, Merrick. Go ahead and type and you'll see your fancy name. Amazing. Amazing. Should work at least. I hope I didn't fuck it up. Um, Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Hey, there we go. Fancy name, Merrick. There you go, Merrick. So that's Mitch McConnell, and that's what Mitch McConnell is doing to you. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want to help, I want to start educating people on who is actually responsible. Who are the individual people and factions that are responsible for their lives being full of suffering? And let me tell you folks, Mitch McConnell is one of them. 
And I challenge you, if you think I'm wrong on this, dig a little more yourself into Mitch McConnell. I'm not going to do a whole biography on this turtle fuck. However, I can assure you, the deeper you dig, the more you will find that your life, you, my lovely little imps, you, your life has been negatively affected by Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell serves one thing. And that is the American corporate right. That's it. Nothing else. He is a servant of those people. He believes firmly in hierarchical power, and he serves those who are the lords over him. Oh, Mitch is a much Mitch is a much more evil and and capable. Um, political actor than Donald Trump. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes, silent, indeed. I'm from Sweden, but I consider the Republican Party to be the party of the people that believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old and that climate change is fake, while the Democrats follow silence. Uh, follow science. The only thing you need to do to be a Republican hero is just say a bunch of crazy, controversial, and racist things, and they will think you are brave. That's how their brain works. Recently, I watched a. Uh, I you know I I don't entirely disagree with you, Amen. Um, the uh, Republican Party is just full of monsters like this. Recently, I watched a documentary with Dylan Burr, or not a documentary, a. Uh, a, dr a dramatization of the life of Dick Cheney with Dylan Burns. Dick Cheney is another great example of this. A very boring man whose desire was power. And he did everything in his power to gain more of it. And he succeeded at the cost of millions of lives. I watched Vice. Yeah. It's really fucking good. Good movie. Um, some problems with it, but it was a good movie nonetheless. And the more you learn about the Republican Party, the more you realize that there is always a balancing act being played between people like Trump, rabid, racist, frothing populists, and the power brokers, the boring power brokers behind them. Donald Trump has Mitch McConnell and a couple of others. George Bush, the buffoon, the clown, had... Dick Cheney and Rumsfeld. Yeah, yeah, Steve Carell one. He did a really good job. Steve Carell played Donald Rumsfeld. But we in but that is a terrifying mix, but we have to acknowledge how they operate. We have to if we want to start winning politically, which we do, because if we don't, a lot of us in this chat are going to be dead. We kind of got to figure out how to win. And figuring out how to win means learning to keep your eyes open for the boring Mitch McConnell types and recognize them for the the opponents that they are. And if you think I'm joking, if you think I'm being um if you think I'm being over like uh exaggeratory, what do you think is going to happen as a result of no one getting any government aid as we barrel into a great depression? As we barrel into the middle of a pandemic that, again, I showed the numbers before, are spiking into the worst eviction crisis in the history in the last 100 years. What do you think is going to happen when the government denies aid? When Mitch McConnell puts a poison pill in that denies aid to all of Americans? What do you think happens? We need to stop buying in to this democratic... Uh, liberal, like, CNN style of politics where everything is always so... <sighs> What's the word for it? What's the word I'm thinking of? Let me just think of the right word here for a second. I'm blanking on the word. Um, credulous. That's the word. Where we give credulity... Uh, everyone is so gullible, so motherfucking gullible, and they're always trying to reach across the aisle to ghouls who want you dead and are okay with watching you die. 
Do you think that Dick Cheney didn't know how many people he was killing and terrorizing? Do you think that Mitch McConnell doesn't know how many people he's killing and ruining? He knows. He doesn't fucking care. He doesn't fucking care. And you can't play nice with people like that. You cannot. Or we will keep losing. They have designed their politics to take advantage of good people. To take advantage of people who just want peace and happiness. So stop falling for it. That's my challenge to all of my imps. Please, look a little deeper. Look a little deeper into these people and figure out who they are, find them, and fight against them. Because if you don't, well, it's your own loss. There's probably a few of you out there who are doing very well and have lots of money and are comfortable. But for the rest of us, the vast majority of Americans who don't even have $600 in their savings, well, guess what? Mitch McConnell being around is going to keep harming us. The people you know are going to continue suffering and dying. The people you know are going to continue working themselves to death as long as people like Mitch McConnell are able to take advantage of our good nature and our peacefulness and our kindness and our willingness to engage everybody in the, uh, in the arena of ideas. So that's why it's important for us to know who Mitch McConnell is and what Mitch McConnell is doing. And not just what Mitch McConnell is doing in some abstract sense, but how Mitch McConnell is hurting you, my dear imps. You. Today, Mitch McConnell is hurting you. You are poorer sp specifically because of the actions of a single person, Mitch McConnell. I mean, obviously, he has his allies. He can't literally do it alone. But Mitch McConnell, he is the hierarchical leader over the Senate. And there are people above him. But this buck stops with Mitch McConnell, and Mitch McConnell is the one who's making it so you don't have money to deal with your bills right now. So I want you to think about this another way, too. Sometimes people don't put politics like this. Um, yeah, well, that's good, Floofy. Um, but here's something else. I want you to think about it. Um, I want you to think about like how much pay $2,000 is. And what, like, you might be willing to go to a job and work for minimum wage and you'd get some money for doing a whole bunch of hard work. How much hard work do you think you could put into politics? How much work do you think you could put into politics in order to get $2,000? Not just that, but what if you put work into politics and instead of getting $2,000, we were getting 2000 a month like most other countries in the world? Whoa, all of a sudden you're making a good wage. What's it cost you? Writing a few emails, uh, going out and, and door knocking once the COVID, once COVID is over, uh, you know, uh, in joining re letter writing campaigns, going to a protest. Is that like, is that worth it? Like imagine how much money you'd be making for every hour you spent at a protest. You're getting $2,000 a month. I don't know. It's wild. Yeah, it's worth thinking about that. Because, see, in our country, all Americans are, um, are trained to believe that politics is like charity. And that's the way we've designed it to be. We've designed po politics to be as difficult to get into as you can possibly imagine. But I've been thinking about it being an American. And guess what? You can put a monetary value on politics. It's a little harder. But think about it this way. If you were able to, I don't know make sure that Mitch McConnell was no longer the Senate majority leader by going out and pushing for Warnock and Ossoff in the Georgia elections. Oh shit, you might make $2,000 from that. You might get paid $2,000. Just saying. And, and even more. Even more. You can. Not rich. I mean, you can get rich from politics, but that's hard. But politics can make us all better off if we're willing to motherfucking pay attention 
and get engaged. And it does take a little bit of effort, but that effort has payoffs. Can you imagine how much better life would be if somehow we had managed to get Mitch out of office before the pandemic happened? Holy shit. Can you imagine? Hey, nice combo. Good ass combo. Can you imagine what would happen? How different this year would have been? What if we were like, wait, wait, I want, I want to just go into fantasy land real quick. Let's go into our little fantasy land. Everybody close your eyes for just a second or don't, but you know, close your mind's eye for a second. And I want you to use your imagination. And I want you to imagine what this year would have been like if you were making $2,000 a month from the government and you could just stay home and not get sick. Can you imagine how different this year would have been for you if you were making $2,000 a month from the government that was entitled to every person? Can you imagine? Holy shit. Guess what? That happened in a lot of other countries and it didn't happen here. Do you know why it didn't happen here? Because of people like Mitch McConnell. Not just because of people like Mitch McConnell, but because of Mitch McConnell and all of his minions like him. Americans need to get politically involved. We need to start taking politics seriously, getting informed, paying attention, contributing when we can. Because if we don't, we will be damned to live this cycle of being clowned on by turtle bitches for the rest of our lives and the rest of our family members' lives, and our kids' lives. It's not fucking dooming time. Are you kidding me? Don't you doom out. Do you know how little energy it actually takes to change this shit? No offense, goddess trans girl, but do you know how little it actually takes to change this shit? The, the Republicans are a minority in our country. They are... They are, they have less numbers than the Democrats and they're winning because they care because Republicans get f mad and they go do shit and they throw money at shit and they get involved with their hands and they do shit sometimes stupidly, sometimes often horrifically, but they do it. We have more numbers than them. The left doesn't yet, but we could, but it does require us being willing to stop laying down and dying and instead lift one another up and actually do shit. All right, that's good. No dooming. We need to start fucking blooming or booming if you want to put it that way. Do it not just for everyone else. Do it for your fucking self because you could have $2,000 right now and live in a decent country that isn't overwhelmed with COVID-19, that doesn't have piles of old people's bodies rotting in a fucking refrigerated truck. We could be living in that country right now if we fucking got our act together. And I understand it is hard. That's the way they design it. The right wing is fighting a war of attrition. They know that if they grind you down and leave you weak and tired, that there's a good chance you'll give up. And the chat just broke, but don't worry. It will be back. Chat will be back. Don't panic. But the fact of the matter is, we do not have to live in this type of world. We have to think harder, research harder, work, and, I, and also rest. We have to learn how to actually rest. Not just lay down and die, but actually rest. Heal up and take care of one another so that we can live another day and build another day. So yeah, that's what I got to say about it. Fuck Mitch McConnell. And we should make it our mission to make sure that people like Mitch McConnell never hold power in this country ever again. If I had my way, I would make it so that the Republican Party would be a figment of history. It is such a malignant and evil force in this country, and I hate getting all demagogy about it. But the fact of the matter is that the Republican Party is personally, they are, they are the core of damage in this country. 
They must be defeated. And I don't know about you all, but I at least am willing to put in the energy and the time and the anger and the work to fix that. But I can't do that shit alone. It takes a lot of us becoming active to do that. So no more fucking dooming. Let's get fucking blooming and booming. Okay? Because the Republicans are doing it. The Republicans are willing to cut throats to win. The Republicans are willing to do anything that it takes to win. And they do. Oh, they do. In fact, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. The degree, the sickening, disgusting degree to which the Republicans are willing to go to win. What about you, though? What are you willing to do to win? Are you willing to go as far as a Republican? Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, but wait. Tweeting angrily can help, especially if you do it effectively. There's all kinds. Wait a second. There's all kinds of ways to help. There's all kinds of ways to uh, push forward. There are all kinds of ways to exploit existing power structures to put your allies into places of power. Yeah, I could. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll call it how to doom effectively. Uh, not, I never asked anything like that, soft Heather. What the hell? Don't jump to that. You don't even need to do that. We're not. You're, you're, you're thinking too big. Think about it this way. When Republicans, when Republicans, listen, listen, I want you to think about this. Do you think that Mitch McConnell is worried about the cost of $2,000 um, paychecks? Do you think he cares about the cost? He doesn't care about the cost. It doesn't cost anything. They gave away money by the billion, by the trillions to corporations. They don't care about the cost. He is willing to go out of his way to make sure that that little benefit that would help every American doesn't happen because he's petty, because he's thinking about power. It doesn't involve, you don't have to wield power by chucking bombs or, or freaking out or beating people up. Although there, that is a type of power that some people wield and the Republicans are willing to use it at various times. There are ways to wield power that are small. Like for example, when Mitch McConnell denies every American $2,000, you can decide if you've got the resources to help other Americans survive this time so that when spring comes, when coronavirus passes, they'll still be alive to keep fighting. And you know what you can do while you do that? You can help them learn about politics. You could talk to them about stuff that matters. Oh, he's never had to. Dizzy eyes. Never. Yeah, 656 million is fucking nothing. They don't care. You kidding me? It's not about that. It's about power. And we can counteract that. We can say, wait a second. I can fight this. There might be a way you can. I don't know. Maybe you've got a lot of free time and you can organize your neighborhood into a tenant union. Maybe you can just come together with your family and say, hey, let's stock up on some supplies and let's share these with families in need. Let's deliver some groceries. Let's, um, let me, maybe I've got a whole bunch of really good videos that I know that are super educational and I can show these to family members and they'll learn about politics. Maybe I can take a little bit of extra time to help uh, boost media. You want to know what's wild? Do you know how much money Republicans give away to Rush Limbaugh? You know that, like, Republicans, like, they will give fucking anything to the people who suck their dicks. Like, R Rush Limbaugh will massage the, their fucking ego to, like, a, 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 to a, a fine Wagyu beef. That's how much he'll massage their ego. And they will literally give him money, even though he has so much money that he could swim in a pile of gold, like Scrooge McDuck. 
again, there's many ways to help. There are so many ways to help, but you have to be willing to actually do it and you have to be thinking about it. And you have to be willing to actually do something. So. Oh, I saw that pen nest. Yeah, the Republican, Louisiana, um, Louisiana Republican who just died of COVID and he's 41. A 41-year-old Republican just died. This this is kind of a bit like Wagyu, but not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's the segment on Mitch McConnell and on not dooming or dooming effectively.